Good morning, Shore Christian Church. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship experience. Wherever you're at, we just want you to give praise to the Lord our God this morning. Thank him for everything that he's done for you. Thank you for all the times that you've been there, Father. Thank you for all the times that you have helped us to overcome each and every situation, Father. We lean on you this morning. We rest on you this morning, Father. We thank you for who you are, for everything that you're doing in each of our lives, for every blessing, Father. We thank you and we lift you up. You alone are worthy to be praised. You alone are worthy of honor and glory in your house, Father. And we praise your name. Praise you, God. Thank you, Father. Praise you. Thank you, God. Praise you. Now the darkness fades into new beginnings as we lift our eyes to a hope beyond. Praise you, God. All creation waits with an expectation to declare the reign of the Lord our God. We will not be moved. We will not be moved when the earth gives way. For the risen one is overcome. Praise you, God. And for every fear, there's an empty grave. For the risen one has overcome. And we thank you, Father. We thank you that you have overcome every situation, Father. That you have overcome even the grave, Jesus. We thank you that with you we are unstoppable that with you we can do all things, that we are who you call us in your word, Father. We lift you and praise you and honor you this morning. Now the silence breaks in the name of Jesus. As the heavens cry, let the earth respond. Praise you, God. All creation shouts with a voice of triumph to declare the reign of the Lord our God. We will not be moved. We will not be moved when the earth gives way. For the risen one is overcome. And for every fear, there's an empty grave. We will not be moved. Come on. We will not be moved when the earth gives away. For the risen one is overcome. And for every fear, there's an empty grave. For the risen one is overcome. And we give you praise, Father. We give you honor, we give you glory in your house, in our hearts, in our homes this morning, Father. We ask your Holy Spirit to move freely through each and every situation. We lean on you this morning, Father. We call you everlasting. We call you all powerful this morning. We thank you for who you are. We praise you honor you this morning he shall reign forever strongholds now surrender for the lord our god has overcome who can be against us jesus our defender he is love and he has overcome 
there's an empty grave for the risen one is overcome we will not be moved when the earth gives away for the risen one There's an empty grave For the reason one is overcome We will not be moved, come on! We will not be moved When the earth gives away For the reason one is overcome Praise you, Lord And for every fear There's an empty grave We lift you up in this house this morning, your house. We give you honor and glory. We thank you that you are the mighty overcomer, that there is no situation that is too great for you, Father. We praise you. We honor you this morning. We will not be moved, but we stand firm in the name of Jesus Christ. for overcoming every situation, Father. <sighs> we give you honor and glory in your house, wherever we are this morning, Lord. In our homes, in our hearts, God. We lift you up in praise. We say no situation is too great for you to handle, Father. We thank you that we are your children this morning that we have the power and authority to call on the mighty name of Jesus Christ and that all things need to bow to that name, bow to that authority this morning. We thank you that we are who you say we are, that we can do what you say we can do, Father. And we believe your word as truth this morning, God. And we thank you for that truth. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, your unconditional love, Father. We give you praise and honor and glory because you are worthy to be praised, worthy to be praised, God. I keep fighting voices in my head that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Praise you, God. Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? Praise you, God. Thank you, Father. Praise you, God. Remind me once again just who I am. Cause I need to know Ooh, oh, and you say I am loved When I can't feel a thing And you say I am strong When I think I am weak And you say I am held When I am falling short Say I am 
matters now is everything you say of me. Thank you, Father. Praise you, God. Praise you. In you I find my worth. In you I find my identity. I believe. Do you all believe? So when I was going to come up here tonight and talk to all of you, I was laying in bed this morning and I was checking out Facebook because that's what we all do. And everybody's like, oh, my God, there was an earthquake. Oh, my God, did you feel the earthquake? Oh, my God, there was an earthquake. And there it is again, that fear, the fear that the enemy has for us. So I texted my wife and I said, did you know there was an earthquake last night? No, I had no idea. I said, that's because you and I 
you and I, we have faith in him. We believe. And we have each other. Through all of this, through the pandemic, we've had each other through all the adversity. And what I said to her was, I, this just came to me, and I said that this Bible is my shield and my heart is my sword against the fear the enemy has put into us. And then I had no idea they were going to be singing that last song, which my wife sings that around the house all day, every day. And I came across this in Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. I have that hope. And I see it in all of you and all of you at home. So good morning, Shore Christian Church. My name is Ed Scarano, and I am one of the leaders here at Shore Christian with my wife, Shari. And I am here to tell you that if this is your first time here, I want you to click the link that we're going to put in right now because we want to gift you with a $5 Starbucks gift card. And if you're a part of Shore Christian Church, we're going to put a link in there right now for you to give at this time. And I just have actually one really important announcement for you. On September 20th, we're going to be doing worship in the park at Springwood Park at 10 a.m. It's going to be Pastor Isaac along with Pastor Samaj, and we're going to get it done this time. We're going to pray for a beautiful day. It is going to be food trucks, and I'm looking forward to it. And with that, I'm going to pass it on to my amazing friend, Pastor Isaac. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ed. I had no idea that there was an earthquake last night. I, I, the, I we slept right through it. I didn't peacefully. check Facebook. I had no idea. Nicole, did you know there was an earthquake last night? Oh, my gosh. Well, you, you guys at the House of Independence, you could be seated. Uh, band, thank you guys so much. And uh, Nicole, one second. You knew I was going to do this. Um, I love this girl so much. And I was so blessed uh, when... She introduced me to the, the first time to uh, her, her new boyfriend, Patrick Johnson, about, it was about a year and a half ago. And it has been such a joy to see you guys grow. And the exciting news that a lot of you probably already know is Nicole got engaged this past weekend. Patrick popped the question and uh, love you so much, Nicole. And he deserves the best, you deserve the best, and you have it. And we love you and so thankful for you and can't wait for the wedding. And it's going to be awesome. Uh, and also, uh, not, you're not going to be able to see him, but he's in the audience here. Uh, Kevin Gross. <laughs> Kevin Goss. Yeah, not gross. You're, you're not gross, Kevin. You're a very handsome, handsome man. Uh, Kevin Goss, also my main man, got engaged uh, a couple weeks ago to Jesse Rarig. And uh, so thankful to see all the couples meeting in the church and uh, finding love, and, and it's just a blessing. Love you, Kevin, and uh, excited for uh, this sermon. This sermon, this is going to be kind of a standalone sermon. Uh, we are uh, going to be, as Ed said, uh, next Sunday in Springwood Park, 10 a.m. That's a, a Sunday, September the 20th, and uh, then we're going to be starting a new series after that. So uh, this is kind of a standalone sermon, but I believe it is going to bless you so much and uh, just kind of really segues exactly what, what Ed was talking about uh, on the fear. Uh, and uh, the title of the message that I want to share is going to be uh, Ants in Your Pants. Anyone ever have ants in their pants before? Joe, you ever have ants in your pants before? Never? James Brown, I don't know if you knew it, had, had a song and uh, he said, I got ants in my pants. I, and I, need and I need to dance. And uh, that, that's going to be the title. It's going to make sense in just a second. Uh, go with me to Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. And uh, this is the story of uh, the Israelites about to go into the promised land. And uh, before they uh, go into this, this promised land, they have to cross the Jordan River. And they send out scouts to uh, let the, the armies know uh, what it's like over there and what the challenges are going to be on the other side. And, and they have been waiting for this moment for decades, uh, uh, almost centuries now. And now they're at the, the precipice. They're at that moment. And they send 12 spies in. And uh, I'm going to start in verse 16. Um, 
it, it says, uh, these are the names of the men Moses sent to explore the land. And they named the, the 11. Uh, and then he names the last one. And Joshua, son of Nun. And when Moses sent them to explore Canaan, he said, go up through the Negev and onto the hill country and see what the land is like, whether the people that live there are strong or weak, few or many, just, you know, a good battle plan. If you're going to be taking new ground, you want to know uh, the details about what you're about to take and what the strongholds are like. And uh, Moses said, uh, find out what kind of land they live in. Is it good or bad? What kind of towns do they live in? Uh, are they fortified or are they not fortified? How is the soil? Is it fertile or poor? Are there trees or not? Uh, do your best to bring back even some of the fruit of the land. And so the, the 12 spies go in there, and then uh, they come back. They, they explore for a couple weeks, the Bible says, and then they come back, and it says, verse 26, it says, they came back to Moses and Aaron, and the whole Israelite community came together. And they reported to them the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. And uh, it was huge. I mean, they, they said that the grapes were like the size of like men's heads. They were, they were just massive. And then they reported to them. And they said this, we went into the land which you sent us. And it does flow with milk and honey. And it is amazing. And the, the crops are the best. It's the best, exactly like God said. And here is its fruit. But the people who live there, there's the but. There's the but. And a lot of times, whenever there's a but, you never remember what was said before the but. You just remember what's after the but. So here it is. But the people who, who live there are powerful. And the cities are fortified and very large. And we even saw the descendants of Anak there and the, the Amalekites and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites. And uh, all these, the, these strong people were there. Uh, but then Caleb, I love Caleb. Caleb stepped up and silenced the people and said, lock it up. Shut up. We should go up and take possession of the land. The shut up is not actually in there, but it is implied by the tone and language of Caleb. And he says, but, but we should certainly go up and take this land. But the men who had gone up with him said, we cannot attack those people. They're strong and much stronger than us. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. And they said the, the land, uh, it, it devours those all that are living in, and all the people that we saw were of great size. We saw the Nephilim there, the, the, the descendants of the giants, and uh, we seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we look the same to them. And these 10 spies went in there, and they immediately thought of the worst case scenario. They immediately had a spirit of fear come on them. And those 10, 10 spies polluted over 2 million of the other Israelites and turned the entire group against Joshua and Caleb and Moses. And, and it just so happened that, that God said no one could go into this land. And they had to wander in the desert for 40 years until all the doubtful uh, men and women uh, died out so that Joshua and Caleb could go in. Uh, and then I'm going to read one more passage of Scripture, and then uh, we're going to get this party started. Are you ready here at the House of Independence? All right. Mark chapter 4 and verse 35. It, it says, uh, uh, after Jesus fed the 5,000, he said, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd, he took along his disciples, and they went in a boat. And a furious storm came up, and there were waves breaking over the boat, and it was certainly swamped. And Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a pillow. And the disciples woke him up and said, teacher, don't you even care that we are drowning? You never said that to God. Don't you even care what I'm dealing with? Do you even see what I'm having to, to sleep next to every single night and the frustrations that I'm going through and the financial turbulence that I'm struggling with? Don't you even care? And Jesus got up and rebuked the wind and the waves and says, quiet, be still. And the wind died down and they arrived at the other side. Ants in my pants. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. I pray that you help me share this message in a way that can pierce the hearts of everyone that is listening, Lord God. I pray that we will get this in-season revelation, Father. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name, everybody says amen. Ants. Ants in your pants. When I'm talking about ants tonight, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, if you're here at the House of Independence, take a mental note. Write this down. Uh, this is what it is. ANTS stands for Automatic Negative Thinking, and then I was going to use Syndrome, but I'm going to instead go with Suckers, because anyone that's got Automatic Negative Thinking, you are a sucker, sucker, 
And I, I look at these two stories of the Israelites and the disciples, both of them, the first thing that they start thinking of is automatically thinking about all the negative that could happen to them if they follow God's will. And so many people nowadays, we, we got a case of automatic negative thinking suckers. Because instantly, if we see one thing, we automatically go to the negative. We automatically go to the worst case scenario. We automatically go, they didn't text me back. They must hate me. What's wrong with me? What did I do? Did I offend them? Did I do something wrong? I remember the, the first time I ever met Diamond, uh, we were at the LA Dream Center. And uh, we went for a jog. We, we jogged for like two and a half miles. And, and at, at this point, uh, I, I don't know if, if Diamond was really a runner or if she was just trying to keep up with me, but literally on the way back, her face turned purple. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, she'll tell you about it when she preaches one day, I promise. And so we get back from the jog, and so I'm, I'm all excited, and I, I, get, I get Diamond's phone number. Hey guys, you remember, you, you got her phone number. Joe, you remember when you first got Joyce's phone number? what that was like. I mean, you were so excited. Kevin, you know what I'm saying? The first time you got Jesse, oh my gosh, I got it. She said, yes, this is amazing. And then I went home uh, and, and, I, and I thought about for like two and a half hours what I was going to text. And you, you sit there and you're going back and forth. What do I say? I don't want to sound too desperate, but I, I want to make sure she knows that I'm interested. Yada, yada, yada. So I, I spent all this time and I sent her the text and waiting for the reply. And, and an hour goes by, two hours goes by. And then instantly, I think, she hates me. She's mad at me. I ran too fast. What did I say? Did I smell? I, I, I don't know what it was. Did she hear a rumor about me? What is it? Obviously, she, she's not texting me back. What's the problem? And instantly, I thought she's never going to talk to me again. What's the matter with me? Did I have bad breath? What was it? And, and I just went through the whole scenario. And then the next day, I see her, and she's got this big smile on her face. And she's saying, I've had so much fun with you yesterday going for that jog, even though it almost killed me. And, and, then, and then she said, you want to do lunch at the cafe? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I text texted you about this last night. Why didn't you respond? I was up all night waiting for it. She's like, oh, I don't get text messages on my phone. I'm sorry. I had ants in my pants, automatically thinking the worst. And isn't that the case with so many of us, uh, uh, Nancy Dunn, when she heard the title of this message, uh, she said that she was trying to explain to Judah what ants in the pants means, and it's not actually means that you have ants in your pants, it means that you're restless, you can't sit still, and, and so often that's what this, this syndrome will do to us when we automatically go to the negative. Uh, if, if you get a diagnosis, you immediately go to the worst case scenario. This is uh, kind of the first takeaway I want to I wanna say about fear. Fear doesn't prevent you from dying. It prevents you from living. Isn't that the truth? Well, what, what, what if there's, there's a second wave? What, what, what if they close our schools? What, what, what if, what if I, I get diagnosed with COVID-19? There was somebody uh, just this past week who uh, woke up, uh, someone in leadership at the church, and, and there was somebody that she was working with that, that, that got real sick the, the day before, and they had a fever, and then, then she came down with a fever, and she called uh, 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 my, my wife and I, and she was, she was you know, in a little bit of a panic, as all of us would be. And, and then you know, we, we, we told her, uh, you know, just because you have a fever doesn't mean you have COVID-19. And we prayed, and we, and we, and we took, uh, took that stronghold down, and she went and got tested, and it was completely negative. And, but, but that's always what we do, is we go to the worst-case scenario. Oh, my gosh, I have a tickle in my throat. I must have COVID-19. Oh, my gosh, who was I around? Was anybody around sick? Did I wear my mask when I, when I got out of my car? Can you get it through the, through the air? Maybe there's a lot of things about this disease that we don't know about. Oh, my gosh, what is it going to do to me later on to my respiratory system? Where is God in all this? You got ants in your pants. I, I know for a lot of us, this can be very scary. And we always say this year, it's kind of like a, like a hashtag. 2020, must be 2020. You know, just, just oh, I've, uh, everything's probably going to fall apart. It's 2020. Get ants out of your pants. And every time somebody says that to you, just say, you, you, you're not an ant, homie. You're a child of God. 
and, and this, is what, this is what I want to say to everybody, and this is the scripture for the past week that has been in my spirit so strongly, is that if you are a child of God, this is what the word says for your situation, and no matter what challenges come your way, it says this, if God is for me, who can be against me? And that is a rhetorical question because the answer is nothing, nobody, and nothing can stand in your way if you are a child of God. And these, the, the Israelites in this moment, they were so afraid. Oh my gosh, the, this place that God is sending us has challenges. This place that God is calling us to is not going to be easy. Nothing great has ever been accomplished easy, BT Dub. The hard is what makes you realize that you are in the will of God. The hard is what makes it great, is going to be challenging. And if you buckle at the first challenge that you have, and all of a sudden you let the ants in your pants control you, and you start freaking out, and you start speaking negatively, then all of a sudden you're going to miss out on the opportunity that God has for you. Because you cannot operate in the will of God with ants in your pants. And, and I, I'm, I'm all for it. And every single morning I wake up, and the first thing that I pray is, God, give me wisdom for this day. I want to have discernment because I need discernment. You need discernment. I don't want to step out of God's will and into my will. I need to be aligned with God's will. Uh, but at the end of the day, if it is God's will, and if God is sending you a certain direction, that I don't care what the bar graphs say, I don't care what the pie charts say, I don't care what the challenges are, the odds are if God is for you, then nobody can come against you. They may try, but they won't succeed. They may say that your child is slow and will always be slow and has autism. And you need to listen to what they say. But get the ants out of your pants and realize that if God is for me, then you know what? God is going to bring good out of my struggle, and I will see my child do great things and overcome all the odds that these doctors are trying to put against them. That if you're going through a, a season where you feel scared and you feel like the system is stacked against you and you'll never have enough and no one will ever love you because you're damaged goods, get the ants out of your pants and ask yourself, if God is for me, who can be against me? A lot of people uh, on both sides are terrified that this is an election year. And, and no matter who gets uh, elected president, people say the world's going to end on both sides. That's a scary place, but that's where a lot of people are. Uh, so what is going to happen? There's going to be more riots. Uh, uh, there's going to be looting. There's, there, there, we're, we're, we're succumbed with racism and hate. This world is so lost, so evil, so hateful. How can I look forward to anything when I can't even see a silver lining in this madness? If God is for you then who can be against you? And before we live in America, before we're Republican or Democrat, we are a member of the kingdom of God. And no matter what happens in this life, no matter what struggles I face, I know that because I'm a member of his kingdom, that I will overcome every challenge and every opposition that I face in this life. Is anybody at the House of Independence getting something? out of this. The ants out of your pants. Turn the person next to you and say, you got ants in your pants. Teresa, <laughs> get them out. And you're never going to step in God's will because God's will is dangerous. God's will doesn't always make human sense. It can't be explained. But if it is God's will, then you can expect a victory as you're stepping out in faith. When the disciples saw the waves, their instant reaction was, oh my God, Jesus has forsaken us. The Israelites' first reaction was, oh my God, we're, we're gonna be destroyed. We just wasted our time uh, uh, in the wilderness and, and what did God bring us out here for? My goodness, it, they, what their first reaction should have been is I wonder what Jesus is gonna do this time. 
I wonder how God is going to bring us through this mess this time. I mean, he already sent 10 plagues. He already uh, parted the Red Sea. He already, when we were hungry, brought manna from heaven. How is God going to deliver us from this mess? How is God going to deliver us from this storm? Is he going to surf the waves? Is he going to teleport us to the other side? Is he going to speak to the waves and and they're going to obey his voice? That is the question. Not are we going to make it. It's how is God going to deliver me from this one? That's the question we need to ask. And a lot of us, we, we face something called earwigs. Anyone ever heard of an earwig before? Lou, you ever hear of an earwig before? So an earwig is a type of bug. They have them in Africa. And it's found in Africa that, that people will go to sleep outside in, in, the, in the bush, they call it. And there's this earwig that this bug uh, loves to to crawl into very close, warm quarters. And this bug will crawl in a person's ear and literally burrow into a person's brain. They have these these little fangs. You gotta be careful. Wear your earplugs if you go to Africa to sleep, Joe. I don't think you're gonna be sleeping in the bush anytime soon, but no. But but this is what happens. Uh, You'll wake up and you'll be in pain and they'll be able to pull the, the, the bug out. But what they can't do is they can't pull the eggs that the bug will lay inside of your head. And the, (laughs) I know you got enough to worry about in 2020, but I'm just throwing this at you. Uh, And it'll, it'll lay up to 80 to 100 eggs inside your head. Uh, very rare, by the way, very rare. But uh, I, would, I would recommend wearing earplugs to bed going forward. Uh, but but well, the reason I talked about the earwig is, is because this is, this is what happens so often. You may say, I don't have any, any ants in my pants. I, I, don't, I don't think uh, negative automatically. But this is, this is what happens. If you're around people who do, See, be careful the people that you spend your time with, the, the, the ear that you give to other people's voice, because they can lay eggs ant eggs inside your brain and get you to, to think fear and think doubt. Lay eggs of, 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 of fear and anxiety in your ear, in your, in your mind so that you're waking up thinking about it. You're waking up thinking about what's going to happen tomorrow. And, and so often we can allow that group of people to get our ear and then all of a sudden we think that this, this, this country is going to be destroyed and, and my family is going to be destroyed and, and I'm not going to make it through this and, and I'm going to go to bed in fear and, and I'm going to go to bed uh, just, just terrified of what the future may hold and the only thing that's going to save me is if Jesus comes back and the rapture comes. I want you to know that the rapture is not our last hope. Our hope is in Jesus Christ, and he is here now with us, and he will deliver us from whatever we face in this life. It's not just about the next life. It's about what he can do for us today. He is a present help. That, 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 that's now, right? Present. I'm not the best in English, but present means now. And he is a present help in your time of trouble. Get the ants out of your pants. Yes, the x-ray is real, but God is a healer. Yes, the depression is real, but God is a comforter. Yes, the trouble is real, but God is my present help in times of trouble. Fear has something that it could literally control our feelings. And it it could leave a a, a path of destruction behind us. Uh, Today, I I read the story of Chicken Little. And uh, I thought of Chicken Little, and, and I thought about calling this this, this sermon, uh, Penny Henny and Chicken Little. Because the story of, of Chicken Little is, is this, and a lot of us live this every single day. Chicken Little is, is outside, it's a beautiful day, and then all of a sudden he feels something fall on his head and he freaks out and says, oh my goodness, oh my Lord, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. You've heard this, right, Ron? And then Chicken Little, he goes and finds Penny Henny and says, Penny Henny, you're not gonna believe what happened. The sky is falling, we have to go tell the king. We have to go tell him that, that, that it's over, we gotta do something, the sky is falling. So then they go get Chucky Lucky, the turkey, and says to Chucky Lucky the turkey, you, you, the, the sky is falling. And then they get Chucky Lucky the turkey, and then they go get Lucy Goosey. And then they go from, from Lucy Goosey to, to, to what, what's the other one, to Cocky Jockey. And then they went from Cocky Jockey to, to, to Ducky Lucky. And from Ducky Lucky to, to, to Piggy Wiggy. And they got the whole barn. I got them all. 
And they go to the king, and, and while they're in this ruckus, they're stepping on flowers, and they're breaking windows because they're panicked, and they're freaking out. The sky is falling, and oh my God. And they go to the king, and they said, the king, what's going on? And the, the king's like, the sky's fine. And the king goes and looks at all the destruction that they did in the barn, and he's ticked off. He says, show me where this thing hit you in the head. Goes back, and there's the acorn right there. It wasn't the sky falling, chicken little. It was this little acorn. But look at the destruction that you caused because you got ants in your pants, chicken little. And some of you, you have caused so much destruction in your life and in other people's lives because you have jumped to a negative conclusion right off the bat because that was the way you were raised, and that's what your mom did, or that's what your dad did. Or maybe you're basing your future glory, your future with the Lord based off of your past experiences, but I want you to know that your future is not based off of your past experiences. Your future is based off of, as Ed said, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans to give you a hope and a future. And if that is who your God is, then you don't have to base your future off your past experiences. You need to base your future off the past experience that God has had, and his track record is a lot better than yours. So if you are... If you're a chicken little, I want you to know the sky is not falling. That God is a present help in your moment of need. And he is, this is what, this is what God is. He is the pest man. And his, his insecticide is the, the, the sword of the spirit, the word of God. And every morning Satan is after your peace, Kevin. And every morning, Satan it wants to attack your peace, and he'll use a news story. He'll use a comment on social media. He'll use a fresh pimple on your face. He'll use, you know, looking at your love handles, and maybe somebody made a comment to you. Like, ooh, I remember one time uh, someone said to me this one time, I, I put on a little weight, and, and uh, they didn't mean anything but, by it, but I put on some weight, and they saw me on the food truck, and they said, ooh, Pastor Isaac, you're looking healthy. I'm like, what does that mean? Like, you're looking plump. I'm like, what? You know, and I cried for like two weeks. And ants in my pants. And sometimes we'll, we'll take one comment somebody makes and we'll allow it to steal our peace and steal our joy. But Jesus is our pest man. And 365 times in the Bible it says fear not. Every morning you wake up, there's a fear not waiting for you. First John chapter 4 verse 18 says, perfect love casts out all fear. Not perfect circumstances, not a perfect environment. If you're waiting for a perfect environment and perfect circumstances before you allow your fears to be removed, then you're going to be waiting a long time because that will never happen. But if you find a perfect Savior, if you find a perfect lover, a perfect God, then all of a sudden that fear has to go. That doubt has to go. That, 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 that anxiety has to go. If you have the Lord present in your life, it has to to go. It cannot dwell where God is. It cannot dwell where the Holy Spirit is. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there isn't fear, there isn't anxiety, but there is freedom from it. it says in Romans chapter 8, verse 38, I love this, for I am convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons. I love this. Listen to this. Neither our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow can separate uh, our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow can separate us from the love of God. And then this one might be my favorite, Philippians. I'm giving you insecticide this morning. Just to, just to get all those ants out of your life, out of your pants, out of your mind, out of your home. It says, don't worry, verse 6, Philippians 4, about anything. Instead, pray about everything. We got those mixed up a lot of times. We worry about everything and pray about nothing. <laughs> but you, you need to, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Talk to him. He is your friend. He wants to have a relationship with you. It's not about religion. It's about a relationship. Talk to him and thank him for what he's done. Verse 7, and then you will experience God's peace, not man's peace. Man's peace is based on circumstances. Man's peace is based on you being on a, on a, a, a sunny island with a, with a tropical drink in your hand. You think that's peace. That's not real peace. Your problems will follow you wherever you go. But God's peace will be with you in the middle of destruction, in the middle of, of, a, of cancer treatment, in the middle of pain, in the middle of a divorce. That's God's peace. It's not based on circumstances. That's what I want which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your heart and minds. And now, dear brothers, 
One final thing, fix your thoughts on what is true, what is honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. That's the insecticide that you need to have. And pain is real. We get that. We're not denying the facts. We're not in, in that silly type of faith where we deny the struggles or we deny the, the suffering. We never do that. We never deny what somebody's going through and the pain associated with that. Suffering is certainly not a sin. Or Jesus wouldn't have cried when his best friend passed away. It's real. Depression's real. Anxiety is real. Fear is real. But this is what I want to end this sermon with. And it's found in Psalms chapter 30, verse 5. This is what it says. It says, weeping may endure for the night. But at the House of Independence, I want you to say it with me. But joy comes in the morning. Let's say that all together. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The morning will come. The name of Jesus, get the ants out of your pants. Get them out of your mind. That automatic negative thinking. Some of you, you've been like that for your entire life. You don't even know why. A a lot of us, it's just something that was passed down. We learned it from our parents. We just, you know, learned it that our mom always jumped to the worst case scenario. I remember my my father told me that he he had to overcome this because uh, my my grandmother, she had a little bit of the of, of the ants in her pants. Mom, mom, I remember my dad would tell me the reason why he couldn't play football was because somebody down the street, he got kicked in the stomach and got a hernia and, 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 and my mom said, no, 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 you, if, if you get a hernia, you're, you could get cancer. If you get cancer, you could die. So, so do it. You're not playing football. And, and, and my, my dad said he had to fight that. But how do we fight that? Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, Romans 12 verse 2 says. But be transformed by the renewing or the washing or, the, or this word, or the brainwashing of your mind. Washing it with God's word. It says, God's word has the last word in my life. That if it is God's will, then I could expect challenges, I could expect struggles. But I know that there is a promised land on the other side of this battle. That there is joy on the other side of this morning. That there is something beautiful on the other side of this sorrow. And I'm going to put my faith not in my circumstances, not in my surroundings, not even in this country. But I put my faith in Jesus and him alone. And in his hands, that's a good place to put your heart. Let's pray. Father, I just pray right now for everybody that this message was for them. They have found their their minds just going to the negative so often lately. Especially during this time of quarantine and just thinking so negatively immediately, jumping to conclusions, jumping to the worst case scenario. Father, I just pray right now, Lord God, that we will be overcome with a trust and a faith in you when we lie in bed and we we have all these problems and all these things that are undone and all these things that we're uncertain about trying to keep us up at night, I pray, Father, that we'll be able to just say, God, I trust you. I trust you. I believe that as you just put your trust in God, you'll be amazed at how much better you could sleep. You'll be amazed at the joy that you could have, that you don't have to self-medicate yourself to get through all the problems and struggles. But when I put my trust in Jesus, I know that at the end of the day, joy is coming my way. Father, I pray that you will heal all the hearts that have been so disappointed and have been filled with negativity. Pray that they'll take their hearts, give them to you. 
And when you do that, the Bible says that he will guard your heart and give you the peace that surpasses all understanding. If you receive that, just put your hand over your heart right now. If you need the peace that surpasses all understanding with what you're facing right now, God, you see them, you know their hearts. If God is for you, who can be against you? Amen and amen. Praise God. If you're here, just give the Lord a hand clap for this word. I, I pray that it blessed you. Uh, and I, I pray that all of us, we could get the ants out of our pants and get back in the will of God. Uh, if uh, this is a moment where you reconnected with the Lord and want to uh, put your, your life in his hands and give your life to the Lord, uh, that's the best decision you could ever make. And we have a link that's going to pop up right now to share a little bit about that experience and some, uh, some tools that will help you on this walk with the Lord. Also, before we close, uh, if you are a member of Shore Christian Church or if you want to support this ministry financially so we could get these messages out to the people who need them the most, uh, you could give on the link provided right now. Love you so much. Pray that God blesses you exceedingly. And no matter what comes your way, you win because he's with you. God bless. We'll see you soon.